Welcome back inside Studio AP here on Morning Drive and joining us now is Brad Herzog and Brad you've written over 30 children's books. This particular book pertains to the game of golf. Francis and Eddie in the story of great American underdogs and obviously we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Francis. We went we met winning the US Open uh, on a golf course that he lived across the street from. The thing about this book the illustrations are beautiful. These two heroes were children themselves. Right. We lose sight of that don't we? Uh, you're right and I think that's why I always thought it would make a perfect children's story because how many championship stories in American sports have a 10 year old at the heart of the story and a 20 year old who was really just a, still a kid himself who, and they're both really trying to prove themselves to other people and to themselves and that's the foundation for a great story and especially a great children's tale it's just it reads like a fairy tale and yet it's all true the uh, the idea of finding the perfect story in sports uh, some of them have most of the elements some very rarely have all of them you think this story has it all. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's the greatest champion store championship story in golf. I actually think it's the greatest championship story in sports. I think it has all these elements. If you if you could just go sort of one by one with the elements, you know, you have the underdog story, like Sea Biscuit, for example. Great horse, remarkable story. But at least he had a pedigree. He was the grandson of Man of War that was awarded the horse of the century. Francis we met was the son of a French Canadian immigrant who scorned golf as a pastime of the leisure class and wanted his son to have nothing to do with it. Uh, that's not a pedigree for golf. Francis was only a couple years older than golf, American golf itself. Um, so there was no pedigree there. It's the ultimate underdog to me. You have the local kid makes good angle, mm -hmm. which is also a fun angle for a lot of stories, like the miracle on ice when we, when these local American college kids invited the world essentially to Lake Placid and the 1980 U.S. hockey team won the gold medal. But it's as if Mike Ruzioni and Jim Craig and the rest of that team learned to skate by sneaking onto the Lake Placid Ice Arena. <laughs> they were from Boston and Minnesota. Francis lived across the street from the country club in Brookline. Um, so, that, so there's that element. And then you have these sort of dramatic moments combined with a dramatic narrative. You have this sort of Bobby Thompson hitting a home run moment with his with Francis we met's putt on the 17th hole uh, to essentially force a playoff. A chip shot from his front door. And then you have the dramatic narrative, which is sort of like the 69 Mets going from worst to first. But with Francis, he went from obscurity to legendary over the course of five days. Mm. And at the beginning, when he hit his first shot in his first qualifying round, Francis and Eddie, his 10 year old caddy, were walking down the fairway, and not a single spectator followed them. Three or four days later, 10,000 people were following them. It's just an amazing story. You know, we sit here and and we, we're talking as adults. Maybe our our wives would argue otherwise. But but the idea of writing this and trying to explain this story to children, how difficult was that? Well, it's a tough story to distill into 2,000 words, which is even text heavy for a children's book. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, kids like to see themselves in the protagonists of a story. And so this, that came easy with this, because you have kids are always trying to prove themselves to adults, and that's really what this was all about. Um, and they also love sort of a David versus Goliath type tale, and this was described even at the time as David versus two Goliaths, because he was taking on, you know, Harry Varden, his, his hero, mm -hmm. who would be a six-time British Open champion, Ted Ray, the 1912 British Open champ. Um, it was as if, you know, it's sort of like the NC State basketball team in 1983 when they beat Houston. Um, that was great because of David beat Goliath, but this was like as if NC State had beaten Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and the Boston <laughs> Celtics. You know, um, it's that much better of a story, I think. Uh, also, you know, children find inspiration in illustration. The, the photos, uh, you were very particular about who you chose to do this because photos and imagery by itself can inspire children. I think so. You have to, you know, I always, uh, I had control over who I chose for the illustrator of this book. And there's a friend of mine named Zach Pullen who I'd always wanted to work with. I love his illustrations and we'd never gotten to work together. He loves golf. He's a very good golfer. He's a scratch golfer. He's, you know, which is perfect because, and he's laid back too. He, I worry enough and slice enough for both of us. So he's, that's a perfect combination. But he, he's, his illustrations are sort of like Norman Rockwell, I think. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to bring the reader back to 1913. We even have the text on pages that almost look like parchment. Mm. Um, I wanted to take you back because 
this is a story that almost reads like, there are very few photographs from that day actually. So it's almost legend, and even though it's all true, and I think that's the, the image we wanted to convey. It's really the most beautiful book I've been, ever been a part of. The, you know, the idea that this has been made into a movie. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was made into a book that was award-winning. You've written a children's book. Uh, in your mind, in all your research, who do you think got more out of the other in this relationship? Eddie to Francis or the other way around? You know, I think, uh, that's a great question. I think I can't. I don't know if I can answer that because I think they both, at the time, at the time I would say, um, well, Francis got a lot out of Eddie because mm -hmm. Eddie, this ten-year-old kid, settled him down. You know, there's a there's a, a famous moment where um, where former President William Howard Taft is watching, and that that would make any golfer nervous. And Fra and Eddie turns to Francis and says, "Who's the big fat guy?" And 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 it settles him down. Um, and he says, "Don't don't worry about watching the ball. I'll I'll watch the ball." Just a mantra they kept saying. Uh, so Francis, Eddie, Francis needed Eddie, but Eddie needed Francis too because Eddie needed to prove that he was worth something. Um, he, he hadn't been living with his father for a few years. Um, Francis was his hero in the sense that Harry Varden was Francis's hero. Um, it was just the perfect combination. This, as, as Mark Frost once uh, said, um, he, it's as if you could pick the perfect person to settle Francis down. It just happened to be someone half his size. Yeah. Uh, and that just makes for a great story. And the, and the best thing to me about this story, beyond all the physical stuff and the David versus Goliath and the underdog and, um, and all that, is the fact that it's really a story about loyalty and family. There's, there's my two favorite moments are the one moment where, before the playoff began against Harry Varden and Ted Ray, where one of Francis's friends came up to him and said, I think I should caddy for you today. So you need someone who knows the game and knows the course. And little Eddie was heartbroken. And Francis looked at Eddie and said, and then looked at his friend and said, no, I'm, I'm sticking with Eddie. Mm. I, would that happen today? I mean, there's right. no chance. You know? Absolutely. And, and so there's the loyalty. And they became friends for 50 years. Yeah. And then there's the family in the sense that Francis's father wanted nothing to do with the game. Absolutely. Scorned it told Francis, almost ignored him during the, as his fame grew throughout the week, and then at the end when the, Eddie and Francis are hoisted onto the shoulders of the adoring crowd, and Francis says, pass the hat for Eddie, and they're passing a hat around, and people are getting ready to put money in a hat, and the story goes that the first person to put a dollar in the hat was Arthur. We met Francis's father with tears in his eyes and pride wow. in his bearing, and so in the end, it's really a story of a bond created between father and son, and maybe maybe that's the ultimate story of sports after all. Well, and they also went on to live pretty extraordinary lives after this event as well. Wish you the best of luck. It's great having you in. Thank you. Okay, again, the book, Francis and Eddie, uh, the true story of America's underdogs. More on Morning Drive when we continue right after this.